my wife and I, we just traveled to the uh, United States Holocaust Memorial Museum up in D.C. Mine is better. Is it better? <laughs> <laughs> now they have... <laughs> oh, I like that. That's funny. You know why? Have you been wiser? All of the Holocaust Museum focus on, on victim mentality. Oh, us oh, no, Jews. What this have they so done nice. to us? Yeah, I hate the We've victim mentality. Mm -hmm. I refuse to be a victim. What, uh, what you I, yeah. okay. and on our marquee, we have a tie. Tikkun Alam, which means what? Repair the world. Repair, repair the world. Repair the world. Forgive, so I knew there was be, and celebrate you know, life. But I said it for me. Because, because really, we still have to celebrate time. What am I going to sit in a corner and feel sorry for this? And I don't want anybody else to do that. Yeah. It does not help anybody. And the world is filled with victims who feel miserable. Yeah, so, Arthur, speak it first, so, but the U.S. Holocaust Museum, you didn't walk out of their smile, did you? Yes, yeah, yeah, he'll be out here soon now. You walk out of my museum smiling. Yeah, there, yeah, there's oh. there's oh. Maybe I need to come see it. Yeah. yeah, we walked out of there. I'm convinced. <laughs> we left the uh, United States Holocaust Museum uh, just uh, it's heavy big. hearts. Yeah. Because there is no hope when you leave there. But when you leave my museum, you're going to leave with hope. Okay. And there is no, you can't live life always being angry and bitter and, and depressed. There is no, that is what Hitler has accomplished for the world. Mm -hmm. So Hitler is still ruining the lives of many people, not mine. I am not subscribing to that agenda. Right. It seems like a lot of people, through, when I did Google your name, there's quite a bit of controversy out oh there. Oh my goodness. It. You're a controversial figure. Yeah, I am. <laughs> what else is new? Do you find that people are confusing forgiveness with the same terms as such as pardoning or condoning. Like some yeah, people think they, oh, condoning. you're forgetting yeah, this, about it. This is you're like not the, pardoning the Nazis. You're not condoning what they did. You're just forgiving them. Because and saying, I deserve to live without the pain they imposed on me. And that was the easiest way for me to get rid of all the pain. I cannot change it. There's nothing I can do that to change it, but I definitely, definitely deserve it. To live I believe life. I believe that every victim in the face of this earth deserves to live free of what life, society, or even nature calls them. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Sure. Because uh, I've heard um, people ask about Holocaust survivors before. What is your feeling about God? You know, because, uh, okay, let me, let me, and what I mean by that is, you know, some people feel like, well, God was powerful enough to stop this, but he, he allowed it. So, what is your. Well, what, is, what, all, what do you feel? How do you feel I, about I God? I think that there is a God, but when I go up there, I want to debate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. She's a controversial figure, remember. But I want to ask God, the innocent children, who okay. didn't do anything wrong, how come you kill them first? Okay. I don't understand that. So you have some questions to yeah, ask. I want a little debate. Okay. You're not bitter or hatred. There's no bitterness toward it. But you just want to know. Well, you I want, want, to you want some questions. Okay. How, this, how God works. Good. If you can give me some insight, I would appreciate it. <laughs> Good. Who was the Holocaust survivor that actually lost his faith after surviving Auschwitz? It wasn't Eli Wiesel, was it? Dude, there was one. I, well, I read I don't an autobiography. Eli Wiesel sort of things I care. I don't care about Mr. Wiesel. <laughs> I couldn't care less. I, I believe it was him, but maybe... And well, then there Mr. Was Giselle, have you ever seen his tattoo? Do you think I, he has one? Good question. Because I have met with him and asked to show, to show me his tattoo. I wanted to compare how his look compared to mine. Uh -huh. Because I'm always interested. And he said to me it was too private. Really? He was the only Auschwitz survivor who refused to show me his tattoo because it was too private. I said to him, you know, I didn't ask you to pull down your pants. <laughs> <laughs> I only asked you to roll up your sleeve. 
but so I don't know. I am not sure what Mr. Vizel. It might have been. It might not have been him. Um, but, but I, I have mean, read some of his called, documentaries. The truth is that some people who survived Auschwitz became more religious. Some mm -hmm. people became less religious. But the coping mechanism under these conditions it's so different for each individual. Individual. It will be very. Good. I mean, <laughs> as a 10-year-old child, did I understand what all I understood that people were dying here like flies, and I was not going to end up there on that military floor. So, okay, when am I going to finally speak? Because I, all my energy is being <laughs> used I up. Uh, used I don't up. want to tire you. <laughs> I bet she's a lot of energy. <laughs> I'm 80 years old. How much energy do you think I have? <laughs> a lot. A lot. <laughs> so many times a message that's given to like our generation is uh, your grandparents died because of who they are and you have to you have this weight and this burden to be who you are. Be a burden. And a lot of exactly so what you're saying is you're turning the whole thing on its head. You're not letting so ourselves. The rabbis be don't victims. like me very much. So <laughs> Actually I think my husband, my husband tries to say the message really is maybe then they die for Judaism. Now we have to live for Judaism and enjoy it. Happy, yes. So I, I feel I very the, empowered. I dent the whole round, the selection plan. Yeah. What you say? <laughs> I dent the whole round. Dance the whole round. It's a traditional <laughs> Jewish dance. Oh really? <laughs> And uh, people said, oh, you, and this was hilarious, because I was there, and there was a group of eight or ten monks who heard that I was there, and they wanted to talk to me. They had these long robes, and I said, you know, it would be nice to see you dance with me the whole <laughs> And I couldn't convince them to budge. So I said, okay, I'll start, and some other people from my group joined it. So somebody asked me, isn't that somehow strange? I said, no. This is on this selection platform. The Nazis took away my family and the joy of my life. So I am reclaiming it right here. So what are they going Because I'm a survivor. Nobody dares <laughs> say anything to me. They might think I am nuts, but that's their problem, not mine. <laughs> Who said that after Auschwitz people should just cry and be sad? Life is still beautiful. And there is a lot there are a lot of beautiful things in the world. So I will focus on the good and the beautiful, not the ugly and the evil. I will try to fight them. And the neo Nazis are raising their ugly heads again. I heard someone set fire to your museum. Yes, they did that too. Sorry to hear that. Well, they didn't <coughs> keep you down, did they, Eva? What? They couldn't keep you down, could they? Well, the thing is that it was very, very sad because I didn't realize that people were such filled of hatred. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to, on our marquee, we have what I said, but we have also another marquee remove all hatred and prejudice from this world and let it begin with me. So I was trying to remove hatred and prejudice and they used hatred against me. But um, the message is obviously more powerful than the fire that they set to because as a result of it, a lot of people heard about the museum. And we raised half a million dollars to rebuild the museum. And I never even sent out one single letter to request it. I did not know that anybody would care. And I said if I had to use the last penny in my pocket, I would going to rebuild it. But I didn't need to use my pocket. People want that story to be told. All righty, but okay. Time has arrived. Not, not yet. Not yet. Holy speaking, <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 he's getting. He's almost done. He's almost. Done. He's warming them up. 
Yeah. Sure He's is. warming them up for the good stuff. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> well, we got the preview out here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. They're all smiling. I tell them jokes. Well, that's so hard to talk. So. Okay, no, no, I appreciate it. You are. Can you loan to me at Mangala? I gave him a lot of trouble. <laughs> what would you say? I'm trying to think. Like, are people to come away with a message, with 